All right, beautiful day here at Ocean Beach in San Francisco. I'm out here with Tim, and uh, we're thinking of making something of the scene behind me. All right, so Tim is up and running here. All right, so is that a 11 by 14? 11 by 14 linen, and I don't like painting on linen, but that's all I had with me. So. That's funny, I've not been enjoying painting on linen either. What What is it that you're not enjoying about it? I don't like the texture of this particular type. This is a new panel to me, I've never tried this before. Um, I like the oil primed linen. Those are like, it's kind of grabby and it's smoother but this is that textured line I just don't care for it. The light was better when we first got here, you know, 40 minutes ago, but I do like the shapes in this, um, and the light's good, but I've just lost some of the big shadows that I was initially attracted to. So I don't have a lot of confidence in this one, but I'm gonna do it anyway, and that's not unusual. <laughs> I was thinking the same exact thing. Yeah, I'm not feeling tremendously confident, but hey, it's a good day to experiment. All right, sketching in burnt sienna, and I'm painting on an 18 by 24 inch panel today, and I'm hoping that the size of this panel uh, allows me to capture some of the little interesting bits. Uh, for example, I'm interested in the way this wall kind of winds around and leads up to this restaurant up here, which is the Cliff House, which I think is closed, but it's kind of a tourist attraction. Uh, but there's a road that leads down and then a walkway right here and a wall. Uh, there's some rocks out here in the ocean. There are distant hills, but there's fog over the water, so I don't think I'm going to be able to include those but that is the idea right there. There's some plants and then also some shadows on this hill. And I'm looking for an interesting arrangement of shapes as usual, doing my normal thing here. I may come to regret having this wall in this painting, uh, but I'm gonna try not to get bogged down in detail and keep it fairly simple and then same with the walkway right here. There's a bit of green over here, and then there's more green right here, kind of like that. All right, starting with a mixture of alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue, I want to establish the shadows on this wall before I lose them. This value is a bit dark. I'm going to be lightening it up because the wall is kind of a white color or a beige color. And so I will lighten the value and change the color, but for now I do want to make sure that I have uh, the shadow shapes in place. And then there's a shadow shape right here that I remember from before. It's totally gone now, but I'll put that in on these rocks. It's one of the nice things about painting rocks you can just put in whatever shadows or shapes you need compositionally. This does come out a little bit like this. And then there's this island out here. I think I'd painted it too big originally. Now I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. So that's right there. My horizon might be in the center of my panel, but I don't think that's gonna matter. I'm not worried about it. We'll see. We'll see if it creates problems. I don't think it will. All right, so check it in with Tim here. All right, looking good. When I started painting, this was really the, actually the only shadow left. Um, but that was just not enough. I wanted a bigger shadow shape, so I just put this whole wall in shadow, and then I've played around with the shape of this cast shadow down here, carved it back. So I'm pretty happy with that, you know, that made up shadow shape there. I'm just noticing now that, that in my painting, the, the building and the beach are about the same value, but when I look at the actual scene, uh, the, the beach is, significantly darker so i'll probably have to do some adjusting there but there's still a lot of adjusting to do the fog's coming and going so that's changing what's happening in the sky but you know, as long as we have good light on the scene as long as that stays consistent you know i can work with it somehow yeah usually i work uh dark to light 
but I am going to block in these buildings up here. I've got a mixture of transparent yellow oxide and uh, titanium white. I want this building to be the brightest part of the painting and I will be keying the sky to this building. I've got a warm mixture here of burnt sienna, cadmium yellow medium, titanium white for the cliffs. Okay, I'm noticing a greenish tone to the rocks that are in the distance. So I'm gonna go with that. And it'll create a little bit of separation from the rocks in the foreground. Paying attention to value. The value now is close to the value of the sky. But again, it's really impossible to judge values accurately until you've got something to compare to. So covering the panel is really crucial. All right, for the walkway, I've got a mixture of ultramarine blue, a little bit of dioxazine purple, and I grayed it down a bit with some mud from my, uh, from my palette. Just didn't want it to be too saturated. I don't want it to be too purple, but I am noticing some purple notes uh, in the walkway. The key thing here is keeping the mix thin so that I can come over and adjust. All right, I added a bit of ultramarine to the mixture for the road up here so that there will be a little bit of a different color uh, to separate the road from this walkway. In reality, this wall is very bright and kind of warm in temperature. I'm gonna cool it down a little bit and maybe darken it even a little bit just so that it doesn't draw too much attention. I want it to draw the eye into the composition, but I don't want it to be too bright. Um, so I'm gonna start with a kind of a grayish, light gray mixture, and then I'll alter it as needed. Could be nice to have some thicker, warmer, uh, notes on the wall. I love painting in San Francisco because it allows me to experiment with more complicated scenery uh, where the drawing is a little bit more critical. It can be difficult though, especially because the light is so unpredictable, especially this time of year. It's just, there's so much fog. All right, for the water, I've got ultramarine blue, thalo blue, titanium white, and a bit of alizarin crimson to tone it down a bit. Uh, there's quite a bit of wave activity out here, which is really common for this area. It tends to be pretty rough. So I want interesting shapes, but I do want to capture the essence of this location as well. Actually, I'm not liking that. I think I want to have the waves kind of come in in a radial direction. So more like this, something like that. So I'll have to re-add the white water there. That's not a problem. There are a lot of similar colors in this painting. Hopefully that won't be a problem, but we shall see. Like the sand right here. I'm paying attention to the value of the sand though too because I want it to be dark enough that the white water stands out. Something that took me a while to figure out. I would always paint my sand too light in value. For the sky, starting with a mixture of titanium white, ultramarine blue, and phthalo blue. And I do want a saturated blue sky with a slightly uh, dark value. So I'm, I'm close to a mid-tone here. And the reason is I really want this uh, building to stand out. I want it to be very bright. So I need to make sure that the surrounding sky is dark enough that it stands out. I am gonna lighten up the building a little bit. So I think the value of the sky here is okay. All right, for the fog, I've gone with sort of a grayed down purplish mix here. I've got some dioxazine purple in there. Also some ultramarine blue. 
and some gray from my palette. There we go. All right, so I'm lightening up the shadows on the back of this wall because uh, the wall is light in color. So the shadows are not as dark as I had them. Now you can see up here, this is pretty dark. I will keep some of that dark, maybe. There's now a shadow on this side of the building and I quite like it, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna add it. And there's a little bit of a shadow, something right there. All right, so Tim's finished up here. All right, looks great. Nice shadow shapes. I like the level of detail you got too up in this area. Yeah, if I had a smaller brush or a smaller palette knife, I probably would have done a little bit more, but outdoors, one sitting, I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah. I, I like how this shadow worked out. That I'm glad, I'm really glad I blocked that in shadow even though it wasn't there. Um, I put the figures in toward the very end and that I think gives it a nice sense of scale and adds a little interest. And uh, I've, I struggled with this area and also that up there, just that foliage, because there just wasn't a real strong structure to it. And I wiped out the building once and repainted that. Um, but, you know, all in all, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I like the water. That's probably my favorite part. Came together very quickly, just one shot, and seems to work well and, and doesn't draw too much attention. All right, so here's what I finished up with. I had some of the same struggles that Tim was mentioning, in particular this hill right here. Just trying to come up with an interesting pattern on that hill. Uh, in the future, I think what I might do is just make it all green and eliminate the bits of red. That's one possibility. I'm not sure, that, that, that was definitely a challenge. Another thing I'd change is I think I would eliminate this bit of green right here, this little wedge. I would take that out. Uh, things that I like, I like the way the sky came out. Uh, there's some interesting brushwork and there's a nice change in color and value from the fog to this brighter part of sky to the dark sky up above. Uh, the value relationship between the sky and the building worked out so that it does feel like the building is sort of brightly lit. There's an overall flatness to this painting, in particular in this area, that almost reminds me of a Japanese woodblock print, which I have to confess, I have been looking at Japanese woodblock prints a lot lately and been very inspired by them. The influence has mostly been showing up in my watercolors lately, but I think it's possible that it's showing up now in my oil paintings as well. So at first I was kind of uncomfortable with the way this looked when I got it home. There was a temptation to try to work into these shapes to have it look less flat, but there's something I like about it. So I decided to stop and then just live with the painting for a while and uh, see how I feel about it. All right, well, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, I will put a link to Tim's Instagram down below. Also, if you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel, there's a Patreon link down below. It's a Patreon support that helps keep me making these videos and it's much appreciated, so check it out. Other than that, stay creative. See you guys in the next video.